Some of you might be under the impression that Staples High School, being the affluent high school that it is, is home to above average intelligent students whose uh, education is fostered by a fantastic learning environment that allows them to achieve new heights of achievement. I'm here to tell you that that's not true. We are just as dumb as every other high school kid in America. Don't believe me? Here's a story. I'm going to tell a story about a kid named, let's say, Ryan, uh, just for clarity's sake, uh, who last year decided to pay someone $50 to steal a chem final. Now, somehow, they got away with stealing this chem final right under the teacher's nose and uh, should have gotten away with it. But he was so dumb that he took it to his tutor because he couldn't get the answers even though he had the test right there. The tutor obviously notified the proper authorities and he was expelled. Except that he wasn't. And the reason that he wasn't expelled is not because of any rule, because obviously under any rule or any reasonable school definitely would have been expelled. It was because he knows, like all other Westport kids, how to game the system. Now, I think I speak for most of us when I say that getting into college is the ultimate goal. But in order to do that, you need to have a very high GPA, you need to get really good scores on tests, and you need to participate in after-school activities that make you seem more three-dimensional, and you also need to write a good application. A lot of you might be thinking that you need to be smart to do that, because it does sound pretty hard. But with the right techniques that I'm about to teach you, you don't need to be smart at all. I mean, let's just look at the facts here. George W. Bush got into Yale. Okay, <laughs> okay. the first step in uh, achieving academic success is dishonest class selection. What I mean by that is, you're going to pick classes that are hard, way too hard for you, okay? But the way you get around that is you pick classes that are easy relative to their GPA boost. I'm going to give an example of that. Uh, why would anyone ever take Calc BC when Calc AB is right there and has the same GPA boost? It doesn't make any sense. It's like you're, you're trying to learn things instead of actually like get a good grade. <laughs> it doesn't make any sense. And what you're going to do with these hard classes that you've enrolled in is you're going to get a tutor. Because I know you can all afford a tutor. Okay? We're going to have a class. We're going to have a tutor that meets for an hour a day after school every day or something. I don't really know. But uh, that tutor is going to teach you the ropes for the classes that you can't hang with during class. They're going to teach you in a way that it makes sense to you. Uh, now the next part is specifically... what. Uh, the next task that you have is to harass your teachers for points. Because contrary to popular belief, teachers are people too, and they have boundaries and lines that once you cross them, they will just give in to you. They don't have the willingness to not give you those extra points when you want to bring that 96 up to a 98, or when you want to email them, or you want to go to extra help every single day before your tutor starts. They're eventually going to give up and kind of just succumb to your needs. <laughs> and another way we like to manipulate teachers here is to copy them. And what I mean by that is you must find out your teacher's tendencies, what they like to do, what their ideologies are, and reflect them in your papers. Because teachers and people are predisposed to liking people who agree with them. It's just human nature. And I know I've had a lot of experience in this, so it definitely works. Okay, but what you don't want to do, there's a difference between this and kissing up to your teachers, because teachers have actually gotten good at that. They, they spy it immediately, and they're going to take you down for it. But if you agree with them, there's nothing you can really do. But speaking of writing those papers, this is where I come in, this is where your parents come in. Okay? It's perfectly fine if you want to write like a rough first draft, scribble on the back of a napkin or something like that. But after that, your Ivy League parents should probably take control and start to write everything for you. I mean, really, they're here for a reason. It's because they're smart and they got money because of their intelligence. So why not use it for you? They're probably available. Okay. Uh, now, now that we've gotten to the academic part, here's the kind of tricky part. A lot of you might be thinking, okay, academics, that's easy. There's easy ways to get a good GPA now. 
but I'm solely interested in getting to college. I have no other interests. Like, I'm completely one-dimensional. How do I get around that? <laughs> and the obvious way to get around that is to join meaningful clubs. I'll give an example. B3, okay? Uh, I think everyone who joined B3 initially didn't say, oh wow, I get to help kids. They said, oh wow, what a resume booster. <laughs> and I know a lot of you might be thinking, B3, I'm really like, dry mouth right now, sorry. Uh, B3 gives a once in a lifetime opportunity to help kids to see a way, uh, and you can't value that kind of experience. That's exactly what you're gonna write on your application, and it's gonna look fantastic, okay? It's going to be amazing. <laughs> and the last part isn't really have to do, doesn't really have to do with academics, but you just have to understand that as living embodiments of white privilege, we can do whatever we want. <laughs> we have a lot of advantages, and it's just silly not to take advantage of them. Not taking advantage of these opportunities is pretty much the life equivalent of folding on a full house when kids in the inner city are going all in with a pair of twos. That's like, that's pretty much what it is. Uh, <laughs> when someone says the SAT is racist, all you should think is that it caters to you because we're all white. <laughs> so you need to take advantage of that. Uh, obviously, talking about this kid Ryan before, this is exactly the reason why he didn't get expelled. He knew that. You can live your life however you want to. Whether it be drinking on a Tuesday night or hitting the rig at Earth Place or taking Adderall before every test. Do whatever you want because there's no consequences. We can afford good lawyers. It really comes down to that. Okay. Now, if I haven't convinced some of you uh, to take sort of my ideology and apply it to school, just consider this. This works. This is why kids from Staples do so well. It's not like we're, we're not gaming the system per se. We're playing the system because this is how it's set up. Thank you. <laughs>